Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mariam Tahan. I'm a network software engineer at Intel. And today I'm going to be co presenting with Ifat Afek from uh, Nokia Cloudband. She's a system architect there, and uh, she's also the PTL for the Vitridge project. Um, so today we're going to be uh, presenting and showcasing a noisy neighbor use case and its solution. So I'm just going to introduce uh, the use case to you guys, and then we're going to dive into a demo. And then we're going to dive into the um, technologies that comprise the solution uh, that resolve that use case. So the use cases, or I suppose the question uh, we're trying to answer is, in an OpenStack environment, um, how can we detect and correct a noisy neighbor without uh, migrating a workload um, from the compute node where it is in operation? And like all good things in life, the answer is a three-parter. <laughs> so um, from a detection perspective, we're going to leverage uh, CollectD, which is a system statistics uh, collection daemon, and Intel Resource Director Technology, or RDT. Intel RDT is a set of technologies that allows you to monitor and manage the shared resources on the platform, like last level cache, or um, memory utilization for applications sharing the same socket. So using a combination of these, we're going to detect uh, a noisy neighbor running on a compute node. Then we're going to move into the notification phase. And from a notification perspective, we're going to propagate a notification from Collecti to Vitridge, uh, where the problem and its impact is going to be root caused, visualized, and exported. And finally, once we've moved past that phase, we're going to move straight into the remediation phase or the um, carrying out of the corrective action. And for that, we're going to use a combination of Mistral and Intel RDT's allocation technologies. But before I just dive into a demo, I want to give you guys some context on what exactly we're going to be showing. Um, and maybe a little bit of background information that will help fill some of the gaps uh, so we can understand what we're seeing. Um, so the demo itself consists of a control node and a compute node. On the control node, we have uh, Vitridge, and we're clearly going to be able to see the entity graph and all of the uh, elements that are in operation on the compute node. And Mistral is also running on the controller. From the compute side, uh, we're going to have three virtual machines. The first one is a, a, via, a video server VM that's going to stream a video to a video client VM. And the third VM on the compute node is going to be a virtual machine where we're going to run a stressful application. Each of these virtual machines is uh, pinned to an isolated uh, set of cores. And we're going to monitor the last level cache utilization for each of those cores, uh, leveraging uh, CollectD and Intel RDT's user space library uh, called libpqos. Um, I suppose what's kind of key to point out here is what we the two applications that we're really, really interested in are the video server and the uh, video client. And we're going to showcase how the quality of the video will degrade when we run a stressful application and how it comes back uh, to normal once the corrective action uh, takes place. So under normal operation conditions, we don't see anything. But when we start running a stressful application uh, within the VM and on the compute host, uh, what we're going to see is a significant reduction in the last level cache utilization for both the video server uh, virtual machine and the video client VM. Uh, this is going to cause a um, notification to be generated from CollectD uh, to Vitridge. Uh, Vitridge is going to also uh, notify Mistral. Uh, once it's done its RCA, it's going to notify Mistral of an alarm on that VM. Mistral is going to trigger the corrective action, which is taking advantage of the user space library that's available on the compute node uh, again. And I just want to explain what that corrective action is at a very, very high level. Um, Intel RDT uses this concept of class of service. So this concept can be used to um, 
isolate applications that you're really interested in uh, and prioritize their last level cache utilization from other applications running on the same processor. So we're just gonna reassign a, a higher class of service for the two VMs that we're interested in, and we're gonna see the normal video operation resume and the alarm getting cleared um, on the Vitridge side. So I'm just gonna switch screens here. Um, uh, <coughs> to just give you the lay of the land, we're going to see the host command line here where we're going to start the collect the service. We're going to see the stress uh, VM command line here where we're going to start the stress application in a while. Uh, here we're going to see the video stream um, being fed to the VLC uh, client VM. Uh, we're going to be able to see the Vitridge alarms when they occur. Grafana is going to show us the last level cache utilization for the various um, components of this uh, demo. And we're going to also see the Vitridge entity graph that's going to show us each of the VMs, the cores they're associated with, um, and any alarms that get triggered or generated as a result of uh, noisy neighbors. So we can see the video has already started. Um, the quality is pretty normal there. We're going to start Collect D. Um, there's also a, a link to, to this video um, where you can access it on, on, at YouTube. Uh, I, if I zoom in now, I think we lose vision of the rest of the screen. Uh, but I'll make sure to share it with you guys. You'll just have to trust me for, for some of the command lines. I apologize. So on the host here, we're, we're just literally starting the Collect D service. Uh, what we're going to see is Grafana starts to display the, oh no, sorry. You don't see the, the demo at all. Uh, apologies. Net connection. Are you on the network? No. Um, just one moment. Oh, sorry, folks. There we go. Um, okay. <laughs> I suppose that's one hiccup we can get, we can now get over and uh, restart the demo. <laughs> Apologies. So uh, on the on the top left-hand side here, we're going to see the host command line. Uh, on, uh, moving clockwise, we're going to see the stress guest command line. We're going to see the video stream being fed to the VLC client VM. Uh, the Vitridge alarm screen is uh, going to be displayed down here. On Grafana, we're going to be able to see the last level cache utilization, um, as I mentioned. And on the Vitridge uh, entity graph view, we're going to be able to see each of the virtual machines. So we can see like the Ubuntu Stress VM, the Ubuntu VLC client VM, and the Ubuntu VLC server, and the cores they're attached to. And when an alarm is generated, we're going to see that as well uh, in this view here. So the video starts, and we're going to start the Collect D service. Um, and we should see in Grafana, in a moment, the, some of the metrics um, coming in. And actually, if I just pause it here for a second, what we're going to see is um, on the, on the bare metal host, there is a class of service of zero assigned to all of the cores. So zero means there's no class of service. So applications are fed on a first come, first served basis. Uh, on the Grafana view here, we're going to see the VLC server uh, VM last level cache usage uh, in green. Uh, the stress NG VM 
um, usage, less of a cache usage. And again, there's nothing there at the moment, so you can't really see any um, metrics. It's on the zero line. And the host's last level cache usage is in blue. So we can see from the Grafana side, the last level cache usage is mainly uh, being used by, or the last level cache is mainly being used by the VLC um, server virtual machine. And the video quality is relatively OK. So now we're going to start stress on the bare metal host and stress on the uh, VM. And almost immediately, we see an alarm getting uh, added into the entity graph view. Um, and actually, if I let it run for a second more, just because the refresh rate is a little bit different on uh, the, the two uh, alarm views, what we notice is um, Collecti actually sends only one alarm to Vitridge, and that's to do with the core uh, usage. Um, what's, what's really important to note is that actually Vitridge raises a second alarm to, uh, the, it deduces that there's a noisy neighbor uh, situation that's affecting the VM that's, that's attached to those cores. So Collecti only sends one alarm, Vitridge generates the second alarm. Now, the video quality, now you need to remember with video streams, there's some uh, frames that are buffered for a period of time. So what we're going to see is degrade and disappear uh, while the stress application is running. And um, when Vitridge notifies Mistral to carry out the corrective action, everything should resume to normal. But again, it takes a couple of seconds to buffer up enough videos for the video stream. On the Grafana view, what's interesting to note is we can see that the last level cache usage has dropped significantly. And the host, the bare metal host last level cache usage has spiked up significantly. And we can even start to see some of the stress uh, VM uh, cache utilization also increasing. So once the buffered frames are gone, the video starts getting a little bit choppy and disappears. Now, Vitridge triggered the Mistral uh, workflow immediately. Um, the alarm is cleared when the usage now goes back to a normal level for both the VMs. So we see a small bit of a delay there. And now we're going to see the video come back into normal operation, even though stress is still running on the host and stress is still running on the guest's uh, VM. So it's coming, and we're back and stress is still running. Um, on the Grafana side, the last level cache usage for the uh, VLC server has gone back up. The host is now limited to how much cache it can use. So that usage has gone down. And if we, ch if we just stop the stress application running on the host and check the class of service for the VMs, we're going to see that for the uh, video server, which is tied to cores 37 to 40, the class of service is set to 1, so that's a higher class of service. Uh, then what is configured for the stress NGVM, which is a class of service of 3. And I'm going to show you in a moment just the class of service for the, um, the client VM. And that's set to a class of service of 2. So we've pretty much isolated the two applications that, we've that we were interested in. We've prioritized their last level cache utilization um, without having to migrate any workloads off the compute node. Um, so apologies. Um, so now if we were just to dive in a little bit into the uh, technologies that comprise the solutions, I'm going to focus on the monitoring side, and uh, then Ifat is going to talk us through the, the Vitridge and Mistral workflow. 
So Collect-D is a system statistics daemon that is more than 10 years old. Uh, it's quite mo it has quite a modular architecture. Uh, it's easily extensible via plugins. Um, and basically, um, outside of the actual daemon itself, everything is a plugin. So you have plugins that read telemetry off the platform or events, and you have plugins that publish those events and uh, telemetry to various endpoints. Um, it supports thresholding and notification. Uh, so if you're interested in a, ver in a particular value, you can set min and max warning levels, you can set min and max failure levels, and you can even set notifications to clear those warnings if values fall back into acceptable uh, ranges. Uh, it's platform independent as well. So typically what you have is um, the main collect -E daemon. Uh, you have your input and output plugins, and some plugins work both ways, like the networking plugin allows you to configure things in, um, configure Collect-E in a client server mode, uh, if you want to aggregate metrics off a set of clusters, uh, or a cluster of, uh, of machines, you can do that. Um, but in the barometer project, uh, you know, we've been, we've been particularly focused in on the read plugins. Uh, rather than the plugins that go uh, both ways. Uh, and we've been really, really focused on uh, enabling the relevant metrics and events for capacity planning, trending, and oper operational status of the NFVI, and being able to export uh, those um, metrics and events to the VIM, to MANO. Um, so we've been extending Collect-E with a number of plugins like uh, an A plugin, a Naki plugin, a Salometer plugin, as well as the relevant plugins to monitor the subsystems that we are interested in. And one of the technologies that we think is key uh, for placement decisions, for ad adjustments to scheduling policy, and for resource awareness is Intel RDT. And as I mentioned, Intel RDT is actually a set of technologies. It's not just one technology. Um, it, it's used to monitor and control the, use, like, the usage of the shared resources, in particular the last level cache and the memory bandwidth for processes that are sharing uh, the same processor. The technologies are subcategorized into uh, the monitoring technologies, which are CMT and, uh, sorry, cache monitoring technology and memory bandwidth monitoring. And in the barometer project uh, in OPNFE, we've actually enabled a plugin for Intel RDT that monitors, uh, that leverages those two monitoring technologies and uh, relays the RDT stats to any endpoint that is supported by Collect D to date. And the other categorization of technologies is the allocation technologies, uh, CAT and CDP, which allow you to control um, through software where data is allocated into your cache, prioritize um, applications and isolate them uh, from any other applications that are running on the, on the, process, on the same processor. And what we saw in the demo was actually uh, just CMT and CAT. So CMT just to relay the, the metrics, and CAT to carry out the corrective action by reclassifying the class of service for the VMs that we're um, interested in. From an, from, a, from an actual operation perspective uh, within the demo, um, we simply had the collect daemon running at a particular interval. It issues a read from the collect RDT plugin. The collect RDT plugin retrieves the metrics and publishes or dispatches the values that it collects back to the collect -E daemon. Those values um, are then generally published to write plugins, but in this case, we've configured a threshold uh, for the two VMs that we we're interested uh, in monitoring. And uh, because the threshold uh, was hit in the case where we activated the noisy neighbor, a notification gets generated and sent to the Collect the Vitridge plugin, which then propagates the notification further to Vitridge. I just want to point out that uh, the Collect the Vitridge plugin was developed by the uh, Vitridge team and actually lives in their GitHub. The Collect the RDT plugin was developed by the Barometer team and actually lives in the Collect the uh, GitHub. And lastly, the Intel user space, the Intel RDT user space library is available through GitHub as well, and all the links will be available in the presentation um, afterwards. So now I'm going to hand you over to Ifat to talk us through the Vitridge section. Hi. Um, so Vitridge is an official open stack service for root cause analysis. Um, it is used to uh, organize, analyze, and expand the OpenStack events and alarms. 
a cloud operator um, that has uh, some fault in the cloud may see a very large list of alarms and it will be hard for him to understand what is the root cause of the alarms. And this is where Vitrage can help. Another role of Vitrage is to, um, to report uh, alarms on problems that are not directly monitored in the system. For example, in case of a physical NIC failure, Vitrage can identify the VMs that are affected by this failure and report that they are currently unreachable. Vitrage provides an holistic and complete view of the system, uh, including the physical layer, the, visual layer, the virtual layer, and the application layer, and you can clearly see the relation between these layers and the effect they had on one another. Um, I'll talk a bit about the Vitrage architecture. Vitrage collects information from uh, different data sources. Some of them are OpenStack components like Nova, Cinder, Neutron, Heat, and also AODH, which is telemetry alarming service. Others are external, external monitors, Zabbix, Nagios, and Collecti. And all this information is collected and inserted into a topology graph, the entity graph. In the graph, you can see uh, all the resources and the alarms that Vitrage uh, collected in the system and the relationship between them. Uh, when the graph is modified, Vitrage uh, evaluator checks if there are actions to be taken. An action could be to raise a new alarm, uh, to mark causal relationship between existing alarms, or to modify a state of an object. Uh, the, the logic and the rules of uh, when to execute these actions are defined in a template, which I will describe soon. When Vitrage uh, performs an alarm like raising, uh, performs an action like raising an alarm or modifying the state of an object, it notifies external systems uh, like Nova or uh, SNMP alarms. Um, in addition, Vitrage has an API, a command line interface, CLI, and the user interface that is part of the, Vitrage, uh, the Horizon dashboard. Um, Mariam showed you this slide uh, of the overall flow of the demo, and I will now drill down to the Vitrage part. So Vitrage received an alarm from CollectD about the problem on the core. It added the alarm to the entity graph and checked if there was a matching template. The template that was found said, if there is an alarm on a core and there is an instance that is pinned to this core, you need to raise an alarm on this instance as well saying that it suffers from a, a de performance degradation because of its noisy neighbors. Vitrage raised an alarm on the instance and marked the causal relationship between the two alarms. Next, Vitrage notified Mistral, an OpenStack workflow engine, about the problem on the instance, and Mistral executed a workflow with corrective actions. Vitrage template is where you define the, these rules. A template has three, three sections. Uh, the first two are the entities and the relationships. Where you def the, these are the building blocks. And the, the scenario is where you actually define the rule. Each scenario has a condition and an action, or several actions. In the demo example, one condition was that if there is an alarm on the core, the action was you need to modify the state of the core. Another condition said that if there is an alarm on the core and there is an instance pinned to this, uh, to this core, you need to raise an alarm on the instance and modify the state of the instance. Um, this is how Vitrage uh, helps identify that there is an, a, a problem on the instance while CollectD reported a problem on the core. Um, as a next phase, we are uh, currently working on machine learning algorithm where you can automate the, the process of generating these templates. Um, so so we, we can examine uh, historic alarms and uh, generate more templates and more um, uh, causal relationships. Uh, if you want to learn more or um, see live demos, you are welcome to Nokia booth. Thank you. Back to you, Mariam. Yeah, so um, just to summarize, uh, We've basically showed you how to address or quiesce uh, a noisy neighbor uh, by leveraging a number of technologies um, from a detection perspective, uh, CollectD uh, and Intel RDT, from a notification perspective, uh, Vitrage, and particularly the, that the problem was um, 
and its impact was root cause, visualized, and exported there. And finally, we also showed you how, to, uh, how we carried out some uh, remediation or corrective actions using a combination of Mistral and Intel RDT without migrating any VMs off the compute node uh, where they were in operation. So um, if you're interested in you know, ensuring that uh, platform or the relevant platform metrics um, for supporting capacity planning, trending, and operational status are available through um, a, a standard, an industry standard interface. Uh, if you're also interested in uh, demonstrating how platform technologies can be monitored, consumed, root caused, uh, how alarms can be deduced, as well as state and action in real time, then I invite you to come and join us in both the Vitridge project and the Barometer project in OPNFV. And um, I'm just going to draw your attention to a couple of other presentations that are happening uh, this week around Intel RDT and um, some of the Collect D work that we're doing. And there's some useful links just at the end of the presentation. So we're pretty much happy enough to take any questions. Um, I would invite you to use the microphones. Uh, hi, uh, this is Gurpreet from Spark Communications. Hey, hey Mary. Uh, question. Uh, I assume that Vitridge is, like you mentioned, it's one of the OpenNFE projects? Hi. Uh, Vitridge is an OpenStack project that is collaborating with OpenNFE, with Barometer and with uh, Doctor projects. OK, so it's open source then? Yeah, yeah, fully open source. OK. And based on this demo, I assume that we are making the assumption that last level cache is the only uh, factor which is causing the noisy neighbor impact and the other factors have already been eliminated. Yes, I mean, just for the purpose of the demo, we wanted to showcase a particular use case and how you could do local corrective action for the noisy neighbor use case where the last level cache is the only issue, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, just a quick question and maybe a, a, you know, a, a bit of a side question, but ha have you looked at using the same technology, um, including CollectD and RDT, to actually monitor the, the control plane itself as compared to the applications? Um, I've, I've been looking, for example, for CollectD plugins for OpenStack services, and they're pretty hard to find. Yeah, so we haven't really been looking at monitoring OpenStack services because a lot of them publish their own metrics um, directly to the, to the bus. Um, and our focus has really been very specifically the NFVI, uh, so where the VNFs are, are in operation. Um, if we see a need to collaborate on that in the future, we can certainly consider it, especially from a, a VNF event streaming perspective. Yeah, sort of a, objective observer of the sort of metrics that you talked about, which wouldn't be visible to the services themselves, might be something interesting to consider. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Uh, actually, it was the same question. Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah, from, we are, Yanni, from the operator point of view, we all need to have like an end-to-end -end RCA. So we would really appreciate if it can accept or and take any kind of KPIs from the VNF, VNFM, so that it can correlate the whole stack. This will be perfect. Yeah, so actually in, in um, Collecti, we've been enabling quite a number of uh, plugins um, I apologize. Uh, so not just RDT, but we're looking at stuff uh, from an IPMI perspective, from a hypervisor perspective, so we're supporting Libvirt. Uh, from the platform perspective itself, so we speak to certain monitoring units on the physical platform to retrieve some of that, that st those stats. Uh, and, and we even monitor machine check exceptions and various other components. Um, I would really invite you to uh, visit the Barometer Wiki. Uh, we actually keep a list of all of the statistics that we maintain for any of the plugins that we've enabled uh, for both, uh, actually not just statistics, but events as well. Okay, um, thank you. J just one quick question. Uh, I didn't get what was the uh, corrective action in the demo. The corrective action was, uh, so normally when, when the VMs were in operation, uh, the class of service was configured to zero, which means there was no class of service configured for any of the, of the, of the uh, applications running on the processor. In that case, the utilization of the cache is just on a first come, first serve basis. So when we, run, when we ran stress ng doing matrix multiplication, that just started consuming all of the cache lines. 
what we did was uh, Intel RDT actually allows you to uh, allocate a new class of service for the application that you're interested in, which allows you to prioritize and isolate a section of cache for it. And so nothing else running can consume that cache. And that was what the corrective action was. Um, there was a presentation earlier from the uh, OpenStack Instance HA group, which they were looking for um, event correlation, and also they are invoking Mistral to do remediation. I just wondered if you'd uh, done any work for them or s spoken. I wasn't aware of this presentation, but uh, I will check it. It's interesting. Yeah, it was yeah. earlier today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Really appreciate your time.